how much does how much percentage of us belong to Christ? 100. 100 percent. Amen. 100 percent. Now, uh, in, 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 I wanted to bring something up to your attention. Now. No, I'm, I'm going to leave that one alone. I'm going to leave that one alone. Save that for maybe a a good fellowship time. Something to uh, talk about. Maybe a good devotion. Sometimes God God gives me things throughout the day, what to say and what to do. And he also gives me green lights and red lights and what to say and what not to say. So, um, so this is going to be saved because obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Today, I'm going to be quick, I'm going to be short, and be like, no way, Pastor, are you, how could, how could that even be possible? <laughs> yeah, I'm tall. thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and also, I, I, I take up a lot of real estate, too. <laughs> you know, but uh, it's true, though. We, uh, uh, I wanted to say, What's true? I, I'm about ready to get ahead of myself. Today I want to I want to I want to preach a small little message called that fathers and today's Father's Day, by the way, Amen. Yeah. And I was preparing a script, a, a message, got it all laid out, got it all like taken care of, all the eyes dotted, T's crossed, all that. And then this morning, the Lord impressed in my heart, said, "Don't." Don't preach that. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. He so said, "What I want you to preach is how fathers are priesthood." Oh Lord, Whoop. oh Lord, how fathers. So, so the title of my message, brothers and sisters, today: Fathers are priesthood. Of all their households and to all believers. That's what I'm going to be preaching on. And the, and the text I'm going to be preaching in, preaching from on is first Peter chapter two, verse five. I don't have any slides. This is done towards very last moment stuff. First Peter chapter two, I'm going to begin to read first five. Now, man, I could literally read this whole chapter, but I'm just going to kind of Stick with uh, verse 5 through 9. And you are living stones. This is from the um, NLT. And you that you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. I can almost stay on that one. See, that, that's deep. What's more, you are his holy priest through the meditation of Jesus Christ you offer spiritual sacrifice that please God as the scripture says I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem chosen for great honor and anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced yes you who trust him, recognize the honor God has given him. But for those who reject him, talking about Jesus now, the stone that the builders rejected was now become the cornerstone. And he, and he is the stone that makes people stumble. The rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey God's word. And so they meet the fate that was planned for them. Obedience. <laughs> I know this is not scripture. Obedience is far greater than sacrifice. Verse 9. But you are not that. Are not like that. For you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's 
very own possession. Ooh, we, well, possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Heavenly Father, right now in Jesus' name, I pray, God, that you bless this message, God. Bless the lips, oh God, that's proclaiming your word, oh God. And I pray, God, that you season the hearts, season the ears of all those, not just here, but God, also those that are listening online and those that listen to us later. I pray, God, that your will will be done in the hearts and lives of people, your children, oh God, as we open up your word and learn from you. I pray, God, that your hand will be on all of us, oh God. Let preaching be easy and hearts to receive, oh God, your will that you have for us today. And the church says, amen. Fathers are priesthood. In many ways, to draw a parallel between the priests and the priestly duties of the Old Testament, the book of Leviticus, and all the things that they had to do, from the Old and also the New Testament, and the roles and responsibility of, our, of us, our modern-day Christians, believers. The comparisons are rooted, really are, are looked at for the husbands, for the fathers. Just making this a Father's Day sermon. <laughs> But, but the reality is all of us are seen as priests. And we're priests to our families. And we're priests to everyone out there. A priest is an, an intermediary, kind of the go-between person, between God and people, the in-between person. In times past, the average person was not allowed direct access to God, but he would go through who? The priest. The priest. In the Old Testament, God instituted the Levitical priesthood to be an intermediary or a, a mediary between the between his people with a capital H and his presence and the and the and the and the and what symbolized his presence here on earth. The priest performed all rituals to pronounce blessings and offer atonement for the sins of the people, even and then themselves, actually themselves first. What qualified them for this role? God's choosing. Each priest had to meet certain qualifications that God set, and the high priest in particular underwent an elaborate ritual, cleansing um, even before, before he received that installation of of. of that credentials, as we say, on modern day um, terminology. He had to go through all these, which is all symbolism for a perfect sacrifice. Because even them, they had to go through that cleansing. In the New Testament, the priesthood is seen differently. Though. With the coming, with, with Christ who came, the old sacrifices, that all that old system was all fulfilled. It, did, it wasn't done away with, by the way. It was all fulfilled. Because the perfect sacrifice. They had to, they had to sacrifice animals just to kind of move the sin one more year up. One more year up. It didn't completely cleanse the sin. It didn't completely, like the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. As our sins are like scarlet, it shall be now white as snow. Versus the Old Testament sacrifices and those inadequate sacrifices only 
push that push that sin another year old, another year, another year, until the next, until the perfect time. I keep on pointing to the cross. So in Hebrews chapter 4, see, Jesus is now the high priest making a one-time sacrifice for the sins of humanity through the death and resurrection. Hebrews chapter 4, 14, uh, 14 through 16, and Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 through 12. Believers are referred to as a royal priesthood called to offer a spiritual sacrifice which includes praise, good deeds, sharing of faith. There, we are called in this royal priesthood to do something. And yes, I would like to, yes, we are called in, in, in upon researching this, the praise, we're all called to praise him. We're all called to worship him. But we're also called to be an example. To be that, as the Old Testament priests, priests were, to be that intermediary, that, that, that person that stands between. That's, what, that's the root of sharing the gospel. That's the root of of sharing that testimony to others and what Jesus did for us. That's how to link their lives who don't know Christ, to link that, to connect that to what, yes, with our experience. Not just the knowledge of Jesus dying on the cross, but that experience that we have. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 22 and 23 speaks of the husband's role as being singular to Christ's role with the church. Husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church. Just as Christ leads and nurtures the church, so the husbands are called, the fathers, are called to lead and nurture their families. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 and 9, which I've read earlier, and also in Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, speaks of believers as a royal priesthood, tasked with offerings, spiritual sacrifices, and proclaiming the excellence of him who called all of us. Today, in father, as, as we are celebrate all fathers, I wanted to um, bring to you all attention how the fathers are responsible for the spirituality of, of their family. How the husbands are responsible. Responsible, you're actually the spiritual thermostat. Now, there's a di what's the difference between thermometer and thermostat? Yeah, that's right. So husbands are the fathers are spiritual. You don't you don't have, you don't have to have kids, by the way. The the husbands are responsible. They are the spiritual thermostat of the entire family, helped by their wives. Not just the thermometer. And, 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 and our spouses, our, our, our wonderful wives, are very good thermometers. They really are. But the husbands are the thermostat. The husbands are the ones who set the spirituality, the rating, the level of prayer, the love of Bible reading. And how would you do that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk off camera there, brother. How do you set 
that level of spirituality in the family. By example. Amen. By the example. So in this sense, a husband is seen as the priest of his household. And that special responsibility to lead his family. To lead his family in spiritual matters. To model Christ-like behavior. To teach his family and his children about God. And to love and serve his wife and children sacrificially. Now, I could pretty much unpack this and, and spend a lot of time on this. But the Holy Spirit will do that for me. For me. Because honestly, you know who, where you're at in God. You know what you're doing, what level of spirituality that you're at. It's critical. It's crucial to remember that all believers Men and women, husbands and wives, are part of the royal priesthood. So I'm going to kind of now divert my focus off the husband and onto the wife and to everyone else. Because, see, when you're saved, it's like this like terminology goes, I'm saved, uh, saved, sacrificed. Uh, where am I getting that from? Saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I've heard that. I've heard that growing up before. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Saved meaning what? A new creature in all things, right? Sanctified is to be set apart for His will and filled with the Holy Spirit and empowerment, personal empowerment. That's a separate experience in salvation. We are all part of this priesthood. We are all part of this priesthood to the believer. A little history. In the medieval times, and I'm still talking about in uh, not BC, but AD. In medieval times, the church was led by priests who taught that God works through the sacraments, baptism, communion, and et cetera, and, and church and all that, to bring his truth, blessings, and salvation to his people. Only the ordained priesthood was qualified to oversee those sacraments. And so salvation was said to come through the church. And you could tell how that, just that little bit of twisting of truth, um, could lead to a quite a bit of error there. But with the through the Reformation, Martin Luther and other leaders pointed back to the scriptures as the source of all truth. That it's not up to a private and personal interpretation, but all scriptures are all divinely inspired. All scripture was is divine, divinely inspired. Christians are not dependent upon the priests within the church to interpret scripture for them to be saved, but for them to understand God's word. They themselves now are part of the priesthood. And we, brothers and sisters, are without an excuse. We're given our Bibles. Bibles are, there's a, there's a, a, a sermon that I remember a, a an old preacher preaching how Sodom had no Bible. For some reason, uh, his, his name, he's pretty famous too. Sodom had no Bibles. So I'll remember his name and I'll tell you all. No, 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 no. Not Smith Wigglesworth. No, not Spurgeon. I, I'll remember it. So, no. No more. No more. That's not, Google didn't give that to you. Sodom had no Bible. Why don't you, why don't you whip up Google? And say, uh, okay, Google. <laughs> or Alexa. Yeah, now, come on. No, anyway, we're without an excuse. Amen. 
You can't find a Bible anywhere. I mean, if they're still doing it, their Bible's in all hotel rooms. Yeah, yeah that's it. Leonard Ravenson. Amen. He's a, he's a great man of God, by the way. Sodom had no Bibles. In other words, they are going to be judged, and God judged them, right? How much more is God going to be judging this modern-day wicked, wicked uh, generation who is literally taking the righteousness of God, turning it inside out, where right now it's what's good or what's righteous is not righteous anymore, and what's, what's not, what was not righteous is now righteous. What's, what was wrong is now made right. It's all flipped up. But we, brothers and sisters, are that beacon of light. Amen. We are that royal priesthood. And then my main point of this is I wrap up this quick message. I know it's pretty quick, isn't it? We, brothers and sisters, how we communicate God's word is by setting that example. We are example setters. Are you an example setter? Are you that example setter? Are you, are you truly that one that when people look at you, do they see that Christ-like behavior? Or do they see your old self? Now, I'm not talking about being perfect. We're all still working on one another until, until we get to heaven, by the way. Then we could be perfect. But brothers and sisters, there's a seriousness here of being part of the priesthood. We all believe are part of that priesthood. That's right, that's a good song. That's a good closing song. We are all part of that priesthood. And God's looking to us to share, to be that example. God's looking to us to be the, his vessel so his Holy Spirit could work through us and convince and convict the world of sin. It's hard to do that if we're is still in sin. It's hard to do that when we're still living unrighteously. God is in the business of restoration. He's in the business of forgiveness. He's in the, he's, he's in the business of forgiving ourselves first. Amen? He will. He will. You have not sinned God's grace away. Well, how about the scriptures in Hebrews about about the, the sin that leads to death and and pray that, I mean, really, all sin leads to death. All sin leads to death. But it's up to us to stop. It's, other, it's up to us to repent. It's, other, it's up to us to give it to God, to give that unrighteous thing, that sin that so easily besets us, to give it to God. And God will work it out with you. God will take the little steps that are needed. Amen? And when we come to him, God can take that and help us out. It's not just black and white. Literally. You say, well, God, God did work. I know Brother Richard um, uh, taught on with it in his uh, him and Carol's uh, just Bible talk class, talked about how God was about ready to kill Moses. Before he even got going, he was on his way to Egypt. This is after God uh, demonstrated his power through that, that fire and the fiery bush that never got consumed. Demonstrated his power about him about pulling his, his hand out. He said, put your hand in your coat and pull it out. And it, was, it was white with leprosy. And he said, well, go ahead, put it back in. And then pull it out. Look, it's healed 100%. God could do that. And God was showing him all these things, empowering him equipping him but yet on the way to egypt god was about ready to smite him why because of disobedience it took his wife amen to say hey look look at this it was all about the whole um foreskin thing god commanded his people to be circumcised 
and yet he, he did it himself for himself, right? But he didn't do it for his family. He was probably afraid, well, I don't want to do it to my own kids. Who knows what was going through his head? The situation was, though, he didn't do it. He kept it hidden. And God was about ready to smite him. Can you imagine? I was saying this to Brother Richard. Can you imagine what history would have been? I mean, if you if you look up the, the patriarchs of the Bible, that's good. Keep playing, brother. That's really good. That's good. If you look at what is the greatest patriarchs of the Bible, you know, there's Abraham, right? Well, there's Moses, man. Uh, I, even till this day, God's people, Israel, are celebrating how Moses and his leadership pulled the children of Israel out of Egypt and all these great celebrations, right? But yet, God was about ready to end it and rewrite history. How much more, priest? God's looking to us. How much more? Oh, we, we're, we're not subjected now to animal sacrifices, but something even more serious is his son. How God is looking to us now. God is looking to us. You should open up your, your, your kits, your invite kits, and start using those. And I mean it, too. God's already, you know, my job is to equip the saints. Not just empower and equip. That's, that's my job. So it's been given to you. And, 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 and God says, prove me. He'll work that out. Well, I'm, I, don't feel, I don't feel comfortable. You think it was comfortable for Jesus dying on the cross? We got a whole eternity to feel comfortable. Right now is the time to work brothers and sisters, this life, only one life, so soon it will pass. But only what's done for Christ will last. That's true. This life is going to, you're here one day and gone the next. You'll only be, you're only here just for a short time. So what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? I have the answer for my actions for myself. Same thing with you guys. Priests, especially you husbands and men. Especially your husband, you husbands. God's going to be looking to you on your the spiritual, your spiritual thermometer, temperature, your spiritual temperature of your household. God's looking to you. Not to your wife. God's looking to you. So I'm wrapping up. I brought treats for everyone, not just men, not just husbands. Now, but isn't this the best? I mean, think about it. If we're going to bring, if we're going to bring uh, gifts and treats for men, what's the first thing you think of, right? Jerky, right? Who doesn't like jerky? Anyway. And, and plus for y'all, you know, um, uh, food conscious, I got the, these small ones in here too. So I want you all, um, I'm not going to pass them out. I want you all to come forward, not right now, but after service, take take what you like. This is given to you all as a church, okay? And all to you, and to you too, ladies, okay? This is for everyone, amen? But let's, let's go ahead. I'm going to sing this song.